Hey everybody, we're going to be looking at the smart controls today. And this is one of those tools that took me a long time to really warm up to. I didn't really see the point, partly because if I really wanted to make some changes here, I would just open up the actual original plugin itself or the instrument or whatever. All of the parameters that you can control with the smart controls are available in their full form. So why do we need these smart controls? Well, first of all, they're included with all of our channel presets. And so they're, most of them, for the most part, are already programmed. They're easily available. And there are, in fact, some definite bonuses to using them. Let me go down the list of the things that I, that I think are really valuable. So then you can decide if this is something that you'd want to use. First of all, because there's a group of things already pre-programmed, it's not a lot of skin off your back to use these. And so if you pull them up, you can see what's already there. And here is the very first thing that's really useful. Many of them control things which are not just in one category. So for instance, if I have this up and I can click on the little information and I can click through here, you're going to see that some of these are the actual instrument. down here and some of them like this one are the actual plugins that are here and so it's not just limited to one type of thing so instead of having to go between instruments and effects this can have access to most of the major parameters that you're going to want to adjust so it kind of goes across to all of those things another media bonus is if you have the touch bar on the macbook pro and so you can see right here as long as i'm in this mode with the smart controls, then I've got the smart controls all listed here. And if you customize your smart controls for a track, then they're gonna show up in the custom format there. That's actually really helpful because it means you can get exactly what you want on the computer here. And on the touch bar, you can have all of those controls. The other place this is helpful is if you have the iPad Logic Control app, where you can have access to some of those as well and you're not just limited to what you have on your screen or using your mouse for this. In addition, if you have a keyboard controller with MIDI inputs like sliders or knobs, then you can actually customize the control for that. The way you do that is, with the external assignments, just select one of these, click Learn, move the external knob or fader, and it will be attached to that now. So you can actually do this for other types of tactile control, not just with your screen, your touch bar, or your mobile device. So let's come through here for a moment, and let's actually just go through the process of doing one of these. You'll see just how easy this can be. And let's do, well, let's do the glide right here, very first. So we can come through here, and you're gonna see the list of everything that's on your track. So I can actually come out and do, I wanna do absolute volume for my main fader here. Now I'm clicking on this and moving it, you're seeing that that's moving. So I can attach this as a smart control. And if this had an interface, let's actually come in here and go to one that does. So overdrive, drive, I can open up the, the thing it's attached to by clicking on the button right here with the parameter icon. Then we can set a range, min and max. We can invert it, we can do scaling. And scaling becomes really useful if we wanna have it react a different way than what we're doing. Say our knob's teeny and we don't want it to just scale through the entire thing so quickly, we can adjust that so that we have a, a different output than an input. This is also super useful in a case where perhaps we're doing a bunch of things all at once. So the expand knob here, look at how many things are attached to this one knob. So you can attach multiple things. This will come in really handy in a second when we talk about this, but let's open up the scaling. And you're gonna see that different parameters are scaled differently, which is going to make this able to be useful when we're doing multiple things all at once. 
So how this ties into perhaps one of my favorite things of all is that if we attach multiple parameters to one of the smart controls, let's put this into touch mode, push play, I'll record this. And we're moving a bunch of the parameters there. So let's come down. Here's the expand one I just recorded. It is recording that parameter moving, which then in, in turn controls all of these other ones. So it's a way to add a single automation line to a bunch of parameters simultaneously. As long as they're all tied together, that's actually very useful. And so now we have this automation actually written onto that track for that control. So very, very useful. And it allows you to, again, automate a bunch of things all at once. The only other thing that we can do, which we haven't talked about, would be the ability to change how it looks. So I can come in and change how that looks. And we can go through any of these or the, the default factory ones. But this is a great way to customize that experience. And so it's useful both visually as well as sonically, as well as just being something that's a great efficient tool. Now, is this something I'm using all the time? No, I'm actually still most of the time going into the original instruments effects, but this is still something that as long as I know that for the most part, the work has been done, by someone who created these, then that means it's easy to be able to use it either with the iPad or with an external controller. It, it does make it something which has been useful in a number of different situations. And so be aware that it's here. Definitely check it out. And if you find that there's a way to incorporate this into your workflow that makes your workflow better, then I say use it. If not, then don't. Okay, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're having a great week.